Venezuela is a rich country, but its people are poor. Nowadays, the economic instability that results from its dependence on the black gold, the weakening of other domestic markets, and the great disparity in the distribution of wealth have placed Venezuela among the most problematic countries in the world. The dramatic increase in inflation poses a serious problem. In 1990, President Hugo Chavez started a social policy to fight poverty in the country. However, the assessment of this policy has proved to show some points of light, but also many shadows. The most significant achievement of the present government is the reduction of extreme poverty. With more than 20 social aid projects called missions, the number of people who receive some kind of assistance from the state is large. The major problem is the dependence this paternalistic system of government generates. It does not consider sustainability in the long run. Poverty has decreased, but the problem has not been solved structurally. Likewise, expropriation politics, pricing procedures and control of currency exchange have practically strangled agricultural and industrial productivity. More than 6,000 out of 13,000 businesses have had to stop their activity. And now Venezuela is forced to import basic products, such as meat or coffee, which used to be produced in the same country. At present, many people live on informal trade. Another area where serious clashes have been observed has been in the area of civil rights and freedom. Venezuela is far below democratic levels in issues like the right to private property, freedom of speech in the mass media and free trade. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights criticized the existence of a hostile environment for political dissension and the correct functioning of justice in Venezuela. We are living in a country where the institutions have been kidnapped. There is no independence for institutions. And here, everything depends on the executive of the central government. The Catholic Church, which has great credibility and respect among people, has also, according to some surveys, despite the very low practice of faith, been involved in the socio-political debate of permanent revolution the government is proclaiming. We have had very strong disagreements between the president of the country and the Venezuelan Episcopal Conference. And along these 13 years, we have suffered characteristic defamatory attacks, which are typical of the president of the country, especially when a bishop, with all his right, has expressed his criticism because he can see that nothing, neither political nor financial or social matters, can benefit the country. When he sees nothing has been done for these issues, and above all, because many things have been done regardless of the Constitution. Many things the Church has demanded are because the Constitution has not been obeyed. President Chavez has spared no effort when he attacks the hierarchy of the Church. I make you the cross like this. You are not what you are, not at all. You may be dressed as cardinals or bishops or anything, but you are the devil. Defenders of the most corrupt interests, this is a feast, because I do not believe these bishops are so ignorant. No, no, no. They know what they are doing. They know they are blatantly lying. And this makes them tramps. They are true tramps from the cardinal downwards. I know how to play down. I consider fundamental things. My job as a shepherd is to treat what is essential. And this means I can also have something to say about the rights of Venezuelan people. Anything against the welfare of people should be reported by a bishop. 
Therefore, I personally do not feel any kind of hostility or grudge. Apart from the direct offences from the President, the Church has been affected by the lack of financial support to afford many of their initiatives and projects. By the expropriation of their lands, chapels and other buildings, as well as the countless troubles, cuts and difficulties when they have to accomplish their work. For example, they have to obtain visas for foreign missionaries or priests, or in assistance for education. But perhaps the most serious problem we see today about the uncertain future of the country is the great inner city violence and insecurity prevailing in the streets of the country and the wide division created by the government of Hugo Chavez. They have used, and they still use, a system of confrontation and infighting among social classes, entirely inadequate for a democratic government. The greatest damage done by Chavez's regime has been using hatred as a political tool to promote political clientelism. On one side, he is continuously instigating hatred and the differences of social classes. And on the other side, he is fostering gifts disguised as missions, which really imply mere political clientelism to keep his political bases coerced. This is a great challenge every one of us has to face as a church, as lay people, as clergymen, to encourage reconciliation in our country. Social existence among Venezuelan people, this is a very serious concern, because they have undoubtedly stirred up an element of trouble, distrust and confrontation. And so there are many things to be considered that in the future will cause great confrontation. That is why the major concern from a social point of view is social coexistence among Venezuelan people. From a religious point of view, my greatest concern is the need to strengthen evangelization. That is why I strongly agree with this initiative from the Holy Father of fostering a wider evangelization in the entire world. We are doing our best to make it possible here in Venezuela. Venezuela is now facing a great dilemma. The situation is not easy. Violence, instability, social conflicts, secularism and a great financial crisis. However, there is a hope of a democratic answer from civil and social institutions which may enable Venezuelan people to be reconciled and live together again. And surely the church will accompany them in this process as a shepherd and a prophet of their people. I think the Venezuelan church has done the right thing. We said what we had to say when it had to be said. Why? Because we are shepherds of Venezuelan people. We follow Christ, we bring Christ to their souls, to the souls who are living different social realities. We give them their human rights and we talk to them about their goals as Christian people.